Jazz musicians, they fought in the Cold War and won with the most peaceful of weapons, music. Enlisted by the State Department and prompted by the vision of former New York Congressman Adam Clayton Powell Jr., jazz greats like Dizzy Gillespie, Duke Ellington, and Louis Armstrong traveled the world as ambassadors spreading the wonders of American democracy, even as segregation was in play here in the United States. A new documentary explores this little-known Cold War tactic and its impact both on the world and on the musicians themselves. Here's a clip of The Jazz Ambassadors. One of the people who we're planning to use, my friend Dizzy Gillespie, who's the father of, of modern jazz. What do you think about that, Dizzy? I don't think we have any trouble uh, converting the people over to our style of music. You think they'll dig that? I think they'll dig it very nicely. This is what I might call a cool war, rather than a cold war. <laughs> very good. Uh, the weapon that we will use is the cool one. <laughs> And it's my pleasure to welcome to the program the Jazz Ambassadors Director, Hugo Berkeley. Hugo, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. This is such a great piece of uh, American history and, of course, in how our culture plays a part in the way we're seeing the world. But before we get to that, let's talk about, can you paint a picture for our audience of where America was or where the world was, let's say, in the 50s? Because one of the things that struck me so much was that part of this was because the Soviet Union was kind of blown up America's spot in terms of yeah. how we were uh, actually handling democracy in our own culture. The 50s is such a fascinating period of world history, mm -hmm. I think. There are so many things going on that are defining the modern world coming out of World War II, and this film really re relies on three different things that happen. The first thing is the Cold War and this entrenchment of the opposition of Soviet communism and American democracy. The second thing is um, the civil rights movement within the United States and the uh, push for freedom, for uh, equal rights treatment for all Americans. Mm -hmm. That's a very important thing. And that's really allied to an international liberation struggle around the end of colonialism and countries like India, African countries, Asian countries trying to end the colonial regimes that they've suffered under. So you've got these three big currents of world history all happening together. and uh, and. It's a, it's a cauldron in which lots of different uh, tensions um, percolate. Let's move back to the States and talk about uh, Congressman Clayton Powell Jr. So how did he come up with this idea? In 1955, all of these countries, what they called the uh, non-aligned countries, Asian, African, Indian countries, got together in Bandung, Indonesia for a conference. And um, it was really a, a landmark gathering of uh, countries that represented over half the world's population. From the American point of view, this was uh, something to be worried about, that all of these countries were getting together and figuring out their own policy agenda. And they very much had the idea that if these countries were not explicitly in favour of America in the Cold War, that they were probably against them. So America decided not to send anybody to this conference in Bandung and just sort of tried to ignore it. Well, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. had some different ideas. <laughs> he got himself credentialed as a journalist, flew to Bandung against the um, edicts of the State Department who didn't want him to go. And he went there and he reached out to these countries and said, look, we Americans, we're not perfect. We're engaged in a race struggle inside of our own country. Mm -hmm. We're trying to improve our democracy, but we want to be friends with you. And we'd like to forge contacts with you. And that went over very well. He came back to Washington. He was treated to a standing ovation in Congress. And all of a sudden, people in the State Department sort of thought, well, maybe he's right. Maybe we should engage with these other countries rather than just being frightened of what, where they might go in the Cold War. And that... that well, yeah. yeah, but that uh, sort of brings us to why jazz? That's what I found so fascinating, because jazz was not a form of music that was, you know, well accepted or well respected by everyone in the country right. at that time. That was like alternative music. So why jazz musicians? I think there are a couple of things. One is particularly Adam Clayton Powell Jr.'s history in yeah, Harlem. He'd Harlem. grown up in Harlem. Mm -hmm. He was friends with a lot of jazz musicians. He was married to a jazz pianist, uh, um, Hazel Scott. So he had these very deep connections into the jazz world. And I think he saw the power of those artists to communicate 
with all of these non-white countries in the world. Mm -hmm. He saw that as a, um, a very strong cultural contribution of America that other people really respected. The second thing is that on Voice of America Radio, which was the American government's propaganda radio station broadcast outside of the United States, in 1955, a uh, radio DJ by the name of Willis Conover had launched a jazz program and the State Department and VOA started to receive thousands of letters saying how much people around the world loved listening to these, this jazz show. So there's a kind of two things going on there, but all of a sudden, people in the State Department think, wow, jazz could really help us out in this problem that we're having, but also could appeal to audiences as a means of engaging them with America and what we stand for. Well, this is a fascinating film and, again, a little-known piece of American history that was actually really important. So thank you so much for making this. Thank you very much for having me. I <laughs> Absolutely. The Jazz Ambassadors airs Friday, May 4th at 10 p.m. on PBS. For more details on this documentary and for additional viewing opportunities, visit our website at metrofocus.org.